Did you ever stop to think about how whenever you reach into a cooler full of ice cold pop, you always have to bypass the diet pop to get to the good stuff? Think about the last time you were at a family reunion or some sort of big get together and that big tub of ice cold pop that you dug through. Inevitably, there on top of all the good stuff was the diet pop. Diet pop actually floats in water, while regular pop does not. But why? Isn't all pop the same? What would cause this? The answer has to do with a concept known as a ratio, which you will explore further in this laboratory exercise. A ratio is generally defined as a relationship between numbers or quantities. A ratio is usually simplified by dividing one number by another. For example, in this lab, you will be taking three different sizes of cups, containers, lids, or anything that can be used to trace a circle. You will trace around the bottoms to make three fairly large circles, but each of a different size. For each circle, you will then draw a straight line through its center and measure its diameter. You will then place a piece of string around the object that you traced and grasp the place where the ends of the string meet. The length of this string now represents the circumference of your particular circle or the distance around it. You will now find the ratio of the circumference of each circle to its diameter. To do so, divide the circumference length by the diameter length for each circle. What you should see is that for every circle, regardless of what item you trace to make it, this ratio is the same. For every circle, you should get an approximate value of 3.14. You may have seen this extremely important number in your math courses. It is the value known as pi. This basically means that however much bigger around a circle becomes, its diameter, in turn, increases in size by the same factor. Therefore, the ratio between the two remains unchanging. So, no matter how big or how small or how close or how far away, the value of pi for a circle is always the same. You will also be experimenting with the ratio of surface area to volume in this lab by building and measuring cubes. But the concept of the ratio is the same as was mentioned earlier. But as for our original question concerning diet pop versus regular pop, we can now understand why one floats and one does not. It has to do with a concept known as density. Density is a ratio of an object's mass to its volume. In other words, it is a number that you get from dividing how much an object weighs by how much space it takes up. If you compare a standard can of diet pop with a can of regular pop, you will notice that they both occupy the same volume, 355 milliliters. However, if you put each can on a scale, you will see that the can of Diet Pop, because it is made with slightly different contents, actually weighs less than does the regular pop. This means that even though the volume is the same, the ratio of mass to volume, or the density, is actually different for each can. Try this experiment for yourself and you will see that the ratio for the regular pop gives you a number greater than one. But the ratio for the diet pop gives a number that is less than one. So, what does this have to do with floating or sinking? Well, the density, or the mass to volume ratio, of water is one. Any object that has a density value greater than one will sink in water. Any object with a density value of less than one will float in water, hence the floating diet pop.
The density ratio also has to do with why, if you drop a ball of steel in water, it will sink straight to the bottom. However, if you take that same mass of steel that was in the ball and instead shape it differently, you could actually make a steel ship that floats. Think about it. How is this possible?